Hi guys, welcome to the Savvy Money Show with me, your host Sean. If you find any of today's entertainment helpful, don't forget to smash the lovely like button. It's almost as lovely as me. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and getting the video out to more people. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to hit that red sexy subscribe button. A lot sexier than me, just ask the wife. And the bell notification, you'll be notified when a new video gets uploaded. If you're looking for a free trading platform on which to trade your stocks and shares, don't forget to look in the links in the description below. You'll get a free share for signing up and depositing a small amount. Free trade only requires a £1 deposit, so it's like free money. You'll get a share, I'll get a share, it's a win-win situation. The other ones will require a £100 deposit. Now, I appreciate you giving up your precious time to watch this video, and I appreciate every one of my subscribers. Now, let's carry on. If you look on Robin Track, which tracks all the Robin Hood retail purchases, you'll see at number 19 between Tesla and Amazon, a company called Hexocore, ticker symbol H-E-X-O. And that's the company we're looking at today. It has dropped all the way from five and a half dollars to 75 cents. And why is that? Well, of course, its earnings have been bad, like a lot of companies. But if we look at Zacks, Zacks has ranked it as number two on its buy list. And they need to have a look, according to Zacks, in the options market. Because they reckon that come August 21st, uh, one dollar call had some of the highest implied volatility of all equity options today. They reckon there's going to be a big move in one direction or the other of this stock. It's going to be either a huge rally or a huge sell off. But when you look, they reckon the options traders are going to be pricing in a big move for shares but why would it be a big move for the shares rather than a sell-off yeah. i mean the estimate for the current quarter is supposed to be a loss of four cents per share compared to a loss of three cents now they reckon there's a trade developing first of all and if we look at the financials we can see oh, sorry, that they're making a loss. Now, they've made a loss of 434 million. So, if we take that into account and we look at the liabilities, total liabilities is 104,284,000. Uh, we take that off the total current assets, 314,553,000. Or even if we took it from the cash, 139,505,000, they could easily cover that. And if you look at total assets, which is 861 million, even if you look at the retained earnings, which is minus 124 million 698,000, and you added their loss for the year, which was 434 million 589,000 to the to that they would still have money left over from their assets now granted that includes the property plant and everything but 
thing is, you you got to understand that they where they're making a loss, they won't be paying tax. They will actually get tax relief on that, and you need to also see that you do have 14% held by institutions and 6% held by insiders so and the analysts haven't actually put any data on this yet and as Peter Lynch says you want to get into a company before the analysts notice the company's there so it looks like this is a company that can cover its debt and other than that there's nothing extra special about it except for the fact that options traders are betting on a big move coming soon and add that to the fact that Robin Hood traders are probably the options traders but Robin Hood investors have pushed it up to the 19th most traded stock now we need to think ourselves is it a stock worth betting on well once again it's a penny stock it's a 75 cents stock now if we pick up fifteen dollars of it and it goes back to its highs you're gonna end up with a uh, hundred dollars now but what you don't want is to lose all your money because they they have actually bet on it uh, having huge volatility and it's drops down in the opposite direction so as it is a penny stock as with all penny stocks you should only invest what you can afford to lose so I wouldn't go all in on it thinking it's gonna you're gonna ride it up if you put a couple of quid in and it goes up great but at the same time you can even see there's a dip yeah so I'll be wary of it may put a couple of quid in but nothing more than a couple of quid anyway it's uh if you look at the talk that's going on you don't even have people discussing it you one see, see what the market expects a, a year on over year declining earnings on higher revenues now thing is although it's supposed to I mean it, I forgot to say sorry it is a cannabis producer. It's though simply Wall Street classes it as above its intrinsic value. It also says it may be undervalued by thirty two percent. So I'm not sure how that works out, but you uh, might want to check that out. It's uh Oh, here we are. If you have a look at this, and you can freeze it at any point, it will show you. There you go. The intrinsic value is overvalued, but the company appears quite undervalued at thirty-two percent discount to where the stock price trades. Now, all the MJ stocks have been hit, 
and you have to decide whether you want to take a punt on this or not and i'll see you in the next video don't forget to hit the like and subscribe goodbye